Hey everyone, it's Daniel with VintageMagic.com and I hope you guys are having a good week. So, uh, who's excited for GP Vegas 2017? It's happening literally next week, uh, Thursday. It's crazy. But uh, today's video is not about GP Vegas. It's about a really cool, unique collectible called uh, Artist Proofs. And for those of you who do not know what Artist Proofs are, they're basically Magic the Gathering cards but with a white back where uh, the back is uh, blank and the artist can sketch uh, a sketch, pencil sketch, a black and white sketch or a color drawing. Um, and uh, these cards uh, are from a collector where we are helping selling the cards. And I wanted to do a video on this. You know, I've done some other videos in the past, but it's always nice to revisit artist proofs. And let's take a look. So. What's, uh, first off, these are going to be on our eBay auctions for one week starting today. So they'll be on auction. I'll put the link below. And you can essentially bid on them. They're going to be basically the plateau, the three moxes, and the cockatrice will all be individual. The four um, Julie Barrow proofs will be a set together. The Damian Willick set right here there's 15 cards will be also in an auction and then there's also a total of 18 Damian Willick uh, actually not 18 but uh, I believe there's 18 uh, Damian Willick and then four uh, Julie Barrow revised edition third edition artist proofs all right so let's go through a couple of things first off we have two different types here um, the first one is, these are the beta edition or collector's edition artist proofs. I'll t turn this over. So basically what it is, is it's a white back, glossy artist proof. Um, you notice that they are square corner. They're not like the reg regular magic cards. And what these are, are basically the whole, the entire beta set um, that were uh, given to the artists and there were only 50 of these printed back in the day now some of them may have less than 50 because the wizards sometimes messed up on the amount given to the artists but in this particular case I believe the moxes there's about 50 printed some artists uh, said they only receive sometimes even like 30 or so I think Doug Schuler said his Sarah Angels there's like 30 they only received 30 or something like that so every artist uh, may or may not have um, received 50 but um, these if you've noticed the moxes and the plateau uh, we're not we're not signed by the artist um, the, this particular collector was uh, involved with the artist back in the early days and I guess these were not signed but uh, I just wanted to mention that if anybody does purchase these and this will be in the auction description um, I will be going to GP Vegas 2017 and this will effectively end this auction will end one week from now, so the Monday of the week of GP Vegas. I can bring these to the show and get them signed by the artists if you wish. Um, I'm not going to charge an additional fee for that, so if you want it, it's usually like a $2 fee to get them signed, but um, it's up to you. But um, you would have to obviously pay for the auction first um, and obviously request that and I'll contact you to discuss that. So for these particular five cards, the Cockatrice, the Mox Pearl, Sapphire, Jet, and the uh, Plateau, they need to get signed if you wish. Yeah, so, you know, in terms of these, uh, you know, the story goes with these beta artist proofs is that the beginning, these were the first of, a, of their kind. They were given to the artists as collateral, as um, payment, essentially. And it was a way for um, artists to make extra income or even, you know, business cards um, more earlier. That was the earlier theory. Uh, according to the original art director, Jesper Mirforce, they were kind of like a nice way to have a printed uh, replica, right? A exact replica of your art, but to distinguish it, it'd be blank and they could sign it, they can give them away as almost business cards. And that's exactly what happened is that some of these artist groups like the Volcanic Island, I believe Richard Thomas and even Kev Brockschmidt uh, gave away their artist proofs um, to friends and uh, you know clients or just you know, 
random people. So uh, some of these were just given as business cards. And so the value of these back in the day, there wasn't really much value. Um, over the years, of course, these have become very scarce because of the, you know, the only 50 printed. And this, if you think about it, it's more scarce than alpha, beta, unlimited cards and everything else out there. Uh, in some cases, even rarer than summer magic. It's crazy. So this is really a, a, an area of a collecting where people, I, I feel like it's a great opportunity. If people uh, have not uh, you know, thought about investing in Magic the Gathering, um, this is a great uh, kind of a two-way area where you can invest and collect. It's also a great way to meet the artists. Like if you go to the show, you could uh, get the artist to paint the back of the card with a painting. And I don't have any examples of this today, uh, but if you go to our website, vintagemagic.com, and there is, you can search the artist proof filter. It's one of the selections. You can see some pieces that have been um, sketched or painted. And it's really neat because uh, they really represent the highest end quality collectibles uh, that we have in our industry because they're so rare and limited. Now these are all official magic cards in the front and um, they're collector's edition, but they are, the, the feel of them, everything is official. Now these you can sell that Julie Barrow, for example, signed these cards. Signature is very distinctive. And you know, some people have debated and said, hey, Dan, if the artist does not sign the card, is the artist proof fake? No, that's not necessarily true. It's, you know, some artists just didn't want to just uh, ask the collector, hey, you know, did you want to sign or not? Now, there are cases, there are cases where the artist proofs were um, essentially signed or, um, sorry, they were, um, there was uh, uncut sheets of beta back in the day. And um, they were, uh, by the way, I'm going through the Damian Willock and Julie Barrow revised proofs as we talk. Um, and pe people basically, these uncut sheet beta were uh, cut and they were blank in the back just like artist proof. And they were cut by hand or not a, by machine essentially. And they caused kind of a, 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 there was some on eBay and basically they went for very little money and it was a little bit shady in the way it was presented because when you do that, they're not given, they're, they're not official artist proofs. Something to understand is that artist proofs are very, uh, when you cut them, they were done by machine. So there's no flaring of the edges. So whenever you cut like a piece of cardboard or a, a paper, the edges of them flare um, outward and inward. I mean, not inward, but outward. Because what happens is that the paper um, was not pressed, enough pressure was given at that point of cutting. It essentially causes, um, it's, it, it's not flat. So these um, beta artist proof that were hand cut essentially were um, uh, kind of fraudulent in some way. They're not, they were advertised as artist proofs, but they are not artist proofs. So the question is, how do you distinguish an artist proof versus a regular Magic the Gathering? And why would anybody ever apologize it's a loud, when a car passes, I'm outside, so I'll speak a little louder. But the question is, how do you distinguish an artist proof between um, a Magic card? Well, they obviously need to pass the, the typical tests. So every Magic card has the bend test uh, potential. These all pass the bend test. Another thing is the light test. If you do the light test on these, they will pass the light test. Um, and they have the rosette pattern of the original Magic card. Um, but a key thing is um, the artist proofs themselves, they have the white back. And the key with the white back is that with the glossy uh, collector's edition or international edition cards, they were glossy front and back. If your artist proof is a matte white back finish, that means someone took a collector's edition card, let's say of um, you know a valuable card like the Mock Sapphire, and they stripped the back just like uh, like the collector's edition, and basically. Um, kind of put a white surface, but it generally is not glossy. It's usually matte. 
and that is fake. Now you probably ask yourself, why would someone do that? Well, because a mock sapphire artist proof, there's only 50 of these in the world, right, approximately. That means the value of this proof could be, you know, anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000, maybe 3,000 to some collector. A collector's edition artist proof, or a collector's edition regular car, that is, is only worth probably 100 to $200 on graded mint. Now, if you do the multiplier on that, it's obvious it could be worth stripping it. And these collector's edition cards are the target of a lot of fraudulent reback cards. People try to reback these and even count them as beta or alpha cards, right? So something to look out for in general. Uh, also, like these revised, oh, there's like a motorcycle. These revised proofs, uh, no one's really uh, fraudulently done these yet, but something to note is that the count of value for these revised proofs uh, in terms of production, uh, they're, they're not exactly 50. Um, some of them were like 100, some were 200. Uh, even Antiquities was another set in Legends where they gave uh, too many proofs. Like some, I think there's like a card called Amulet of Krog or something by Margaret Oregon Keene. And she told me she got like 300 of those or something. Insane. So uh, just note that nowadays artist proof, you know, they basically corrected that. There was only a few sets that had that issue. But um, again, those... There are proof sets that have a lot more than 50. And Revised did have some of that also. So, um, but you know, it, it really comes to just monetary situation. I mean, people do fraudulent things to counterfeit or reback because they wanna improve the value of that. And it's too bad for the marketplace because, you know, most people, buyers and collectors don't really know. So I hope that when you're watching this video, you get some idea of understanding of what to look for. All right, so these are all gonna be on eBay auction, like I said. Uh, these Damien Willick ones, or all 15 will be on auction. These four uh, Julie Barrows will be in a lot. All these Damien Willick, I think there's uh, 14 or 18 of them, I forgot, will be on auction. And then the, um, I believe there's 18 of those. And then there's four beta uh, collector's edition for Julie Barrow. And then you have the individual plateau, Mox Pearl, Mox Sapphire, Mox Jet, and a Cockatrice unsigned for those. Uh, one thing I will note for the Damien Willick is that this reverse damage is, I don't know what heck, it went through like the dryer or something, but it's bent up like crap. Uh, so note that on the condition. You'll notice through the shiny gloss that is a real artist proof when it's shiny like that. Um, and there's no like flaring of edges. But this particular one got destroyed essentially. Uh, it's almost like uh, it's almost like crumbled in some weird way. All right, guys. Hey, you guys, thanks again for all your Patreon support, by the way. I mean, these videos that are coming out, I'm doing more and more frequent videos, are because of the Patreon supporters on my channel. Check out the Patreon uh, link below. Uh, for those of you guys who have not seen it before, it is really cool. I put some really great rewards. Uh, for those of you who like vintage Magic Gathering cards, artist proofs in the future, packs, boxes, graded cards, um, really great rewards uh, for people that help support the channel. Um, as you guys know, I, my full-time business is the vintagemagic.com, but the video side is um, something I really appreciate and enjoy, and I want to produce more and more content for you guys. Um, and the Patreon money goes to making more videos, and uh, hopefully you guys will really enjoy the GP Las Vegas 2017 videos we'll have. Um, Rudy from Alpha Investments is going to be at GP Las Vegas and he'll be helping us at our booth. Uh, he'll be the main pack guy, guys. So if you guys want to open some packs, get on film, uh, learn about investing, Magic the Gathering, talk to him about anything. Uh, Rudy is quite the character and just extremely knowledgeable. Uh, it, it just, I, you know, I've never met the guy and uh, I've, I've known this guy for over a decade and I, I, I just talk to him on the phone, doing business with him. 
I really trust the guy. He's a really nice guy. I hope you guys, uh, if you guys make it over there to visit him and talk to him about uh, your Magic the Gathering collecting journey. All right, guys. So again, these artist proofs are going to be on our uh, eBay store on auction for seven days. So next Monday around this uh, right now is... Uh, it's it's going to be on auction right now, so probably end around 10 o'clock or so Pacific Standard Time next week. Um, and um, that's the week before GP Vegas, so I think that's the 12th. Yes, June 12th, Monday. And be sure to bid on these. Um, these are extremely, extremely scarce, guys. You guys will not, you know, you probably ask yourself, well, what is the, the typical price I should be bidding as a floor for these? The thing is, these are so rare and collectible. Some of these, if certain collectors want them, they're going to bid, you know, r ridiculous prices. So be cautioned that it's not like it's a normal price of a regular uh, beta card. Some of these could go for... Uh, you know, like a case of cockatrice, it could go for $200 $300. You don't know. These moxes could go for a couple thousand plus, even though regular moxes played are a thousand bucks. So it really depends on the bidding action. But I hope if you guys really want to own some of these artist proofs, you guys check it out. It'll really help the collector um, out. I'm helping out uh, sell these. And um, I hope you guys enjoy. Thanks again for watching. You guys have a good week. Take care.